So we're going to take a look at variables and a bit in more detail than usual. We're going to take a look and see what exactly is going on when you create variables in your programs. So it's going to depend a lot on exactly which uh, which language you're actually using because they're handled a little bit differently depending on which compiler or which interpreter it is but it's it's the it's the compiler or the interpreter's job to figure out when you create a variable where should that variable live what type should it be if you haven't already declared that how to keep track of that so we're going to take a quick look uh, these are some examples of different variables uh, now I don't actually own any cats but I just thought it would be a fun example to have uh, here's a bunch of variables for a program uh, and these are names of variables these are the types declared for the variables and this is the memory address at which they are starting this is just a sample that is in hexadecimal size in bytes um, and what is the value of that uh, of what's there some of these guys are in binary some of them are in hex you know it just anyway um, so yeah here we have just some examples just to create a bunch of variables so if you had a variable name as soon as you create a variable your compiler or interpreter needs to figure out where is it going to put it it needs to allocate memory and that's going to be at a particular address and based on the size or based on the type usually depends on the size now there are exceptions like say objects and strings strings usually start at a certain spot and then they will end wherever they reach a null character that's what that backslash zero is for that's to show this is a null uh, which is usually in a lot of languages that's a string terminator especially in C and C++ that's usually a string terminator it's actually quite common uh, cats so yeah all right uh, these are both bytes one of them is unsigned and one of them is signed unsigned means that the entire value here it's always going to be recognized as positive we start at zero and we count up so this would be four cats basically that's the number four in the form of a byte so a byte is zero through 255 while a signed byte or any other number that works like this if you have signed and unsigned that first one is whether or not this is negative in this case it is negative my cats available I must have some on loan because I have negative one cats is how this is going to end up however what we do is this is negative or positive so if it's zero we're positive and we've got seven digits and this is a binary representation on seven digits from zero to as many possibilities as I can reach in that number of digits in this case seven in that case that is 128 possibilities being that one of them is taken up by zero we have zero through 127 in the positive range I can reach but since it's a one we're looking back on we're looking back on negative numbers at this point so when it's negative this starts at one and goes up for that 128 possibilities negative 1 through negative 128 can be represented so this unsigned byte can be negative 128 through 127 in our case we just store the number minus 1 in here uh, so it's got to figure out though which address and it's going to depend on scope and it's also going to depend on the modifiers if you're dealing with an object it's it checks for all that while you're while you're writing your programs it's going to be checking to see about any of that uh, do you have access to that while you're calling it uh, is it out of scope and so 
And that's all done by the compiler or by the interpreter that determines where those variables go. But they're going to have a memory address and there's going to be a certain length, usually determined by type. In our case, we have our string. And you'll notice, you know, we created a byte there. It was one long. That means we started at the next address for this one. We started at 41. It's one long. But this one here is 15 long. So we started one at 42, but it's 15 long, which means we got to start after 15, at least 15, and that's why certain like databases and stuff like that, a lot of times you'll declare the length of your string. And so that way, you know, because if you had to add on to this, let's say you change the string partway through your program, it's going to have to figure out where else it can put it. It can no longer put it there if you've got something else like a car weight, a 5,000 pound car right after it. It's just not going to fit there. So now it has to change the memory address of that. And so this, you know, the name is going to equate to a memory address. And where it's going to place the next one, this is two bytes long. It can go, it's got to have room for those two bytes. Then it can start the next one, which is a class reference. It's going to be in probably a memory location. It actually wouldn't be a hundred unless that was actually the class itself. But generally that would also be like a reference in a lot of cases as well, where you will um, at a certain location. But in this case, well, apparently we're actually storing the whole object because it's a hundred long and I was just making that up. But it would probably be about the size of a memory address for a reference to an object. So that's what they are. They are aliases to memory addresses. And that's why variables can oftentimes, you know, yeah, you can pull out you pull out the memory address on certain operators, like in C, you can pull out the address of, and you can point other variables to that memory address. You can create unions where the memory address is two different variables. They're sharing that exact same memory address, which means if you alter one variable, it's also altering the other one too. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's variables for you. Thank you for watching.